These companies, it's not an exaggeration to say, are hellish. Unfortunately, I have personal experience of them. Bayer and Monsanto, these companies are murderous. They jointly developed the um, herbicide, if you'd like to call it, the defoliant um, Agent Orange, which so notoriously uh, was used against the Vietnamese in Southeast Asia. Uh, today, Bayer um, owns Monsanto. Monsanto's claim to infamy is the development of its product Roundup, which um, some say um, is um, very closely related to the original um, Agent Orange. This is the most widely used uh, herbicide in the world and earns Monsanto um, incredible uh, revenues. But also in recent years, uh, a lot of approbation. Bayer um, bought out Monsanto a few years back um, and took on its liabilities, which have now become colossal. Uh, there are multiple cases, class actions being taken all over the world against Monsanto. One case um, was decided uh, in California a few years back. Um, a groundsman who had developed in a relatively short time, I think over two years, had developed terrible um, cancers. Uh, uh, sued Monsanto and was awarded something in the region of $280 million. I think that case is currently uh, being appealed. My story begins to merge with um, Monsanto after I moved down here into the southwest of Ireland. Uh, new beginnings, uh, a pristine in environment, uh, a different way of life. Over 20 years ago, I um, was very hotly engaged in a campaign, my own private uh, self-funded campaign against Monsanto. I, I have moved down here to um, West Cork and um, I developed a small um, eco farm. I probably would could could well have been described as an eco warrior because fairly soon I developed uh, a website. I I was off grid uh, at the time in the sense that I had no mains electricity. My power was supplied by uh, second hand solar panels, second hand uh, batteries, supplemented by my tractor battery. And, and with that, I was able to develop a website from the late 1990s and I called it planorganic.com. Probably a fairly militant um, name to do with uh, how I saw myself, I suppose, at the time as a, an eco-warrior, I guess. My first experience of weed killer was when I grew potatoes fairly intensively on um, my family's home farm in Tipperary in the 1970. I actually used um, um, glyphosate for the first time uh, as a controller, uh, as a means of controlling weeds in the emerging potato crop. When I saw the, um, the devastation uh, to wildlife and to green growth on the fields, I was appalled. I, I actually, I, I never knew there was such a devastating um, chemical product such as this. I used it once, I used it carefully. I never ever used it again and advised all sorts of people not to um, to use it either. I saw it as a threat to the environment, as a threat to um, agricultural workers, and uh, in a residual way, as a threat to the health of everybody who consumed products that were 
grown using toxic, deadly toxic pesticides uh, like that. My website became um, a force to be reckoned with um, worldwide. It was it was early days for the for the internet, and um, I um, saw myself um, as a investigative uh, journalist who investigated things and wrote a lot of articles, um, possibly uh, at my very best. I was doing about 10 articles a week and putting them up uh, um, with some difficulty, I should add as well, because it was very early days for the uh, technology and I was using dial-up. Uh, people in the know would probably shake with horror at the thought and a website that kept kind of breaking apart and took a lot of maintenance late at night to keep the whole thing, um, the whole, keep the whole show on the, on, on the road. I ended up talking at conferences in Ireland and England and in Europe on the subject of uh, uh, pesticide and in particular uh, Monsanto's uh, shocking product, um, Roundup. And that's how I became well informed about Monsanto and about the depredations of uh, its GM policies, but also particularly its herbicide Roundup. And I very deliberately would have sent them emails and links to my website, drawing them deliberately upon myself uh, because I thought I could develop this David and Goliath uh, situation. They kind of fell into my my trap, if you could call it that, uh, and took great notice of me and then threatened to sue me for millions of dollars uh, because of what they claimed was liable. And we were, in fact, due to appear in the High Court in London me, of course, defending myself and not costing me a penny. And they, on the other hand, were spending hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars on expensive uh, legal um, um, experts. But um, at the last moment, within uh, two weeks, I think it was, of the, um, the court case beginning in London, they, without explanation, dropped the case case. I think it was probably to do with the success of um, activists in, in London in particular against McDonald's, which caused McDonald's eventually to spend half a billion dollars uh, changing its menus throughout the world. And maybe the David and Goliath um, um, aspect to that story um, helped mine. And now to a, a very recent story in June uh, 2022, last week. For some time now, I, I got into the habit of treating Friday as my day off because the market in, uh, in Bantry is um, of great interest to me. You meet a, a lot of people there in the day. And of course, um, the most important is um, my socialist friend and bookseller that occasionally uh, uh, appears in, in Castletown Bear, but I, he is always in Bantry and his stall and his, um, uh, his lovely seats that he puts out, you know, lead to a kind of um, speaker's corner type of outlet and uh, a lot of what's interesting um, about Ireland internationally and and local stuff um, passes through our version of Speaker's Corner. Last Friday, I took a little bit of a, a rest from the, we'll call it the intellectual discussion. And I had a few more uh, small purchases to make, a few plants uh, to buy. <laughs> and also, I was hungry. I needed... I needed some sustenance and I would buy something from a stall and uh, munch away as I moved around. And um, at that stage, I was actually stopped by a relatively young man um, who seemed to know me. But in fact, he wasn't. He was a kind of um, 
you know, it was a greeting from somebody who had a cause. They, uh, they, he was proselytizing. He, in fact, was a minister in a minority um, Protestant faith, and he was there with presumably his 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 wife. And very, very quickly, he said he, he told me about his his terrible um, um, physical and medical problems. He had multiple um, types of cancer. They were not in remission, and he would probably be dying fairly soon. Now, that's very s striking, very, very sad, very powerful thing to hear on the side of the street. But the cause of his troubles, he, he began to talk about Monsanto, and he began to talk about um, once receiving uh, a blast of uh, spray from a neighbouring farmer to the property he was renting in Ireland. Um, and the farmer was spraying, uh, spraying uh, his growing potatoes at the end of the season to kill off the harm. Now, I know this story very, very well, very, very intimately. And it's a practice that I have uh, condemned over and over and over again. And I was in the situation where I needed to have harm removed back in the 70s. But there's no way on earth I would expose um, pickers or myself or my family to the effects of uh, the uh, Roundup, basically, and Roundup glyphosate. Anyway, um, it was kind of um, riveting to hear him describe just getting a whiff of this. And and, and also his, his poor cat, and the cat died relatively shortly, and he said... He's multiple problems um, ever, ever since. Uh, My proselytizing friend went on um, to tell me about his researches into Monsanto and its products. The usual thing about Agent Orange and um, uh, being an Agent Orange and derivative. Um, it was harrowing to hear his story. And to hear the detail, most of which I had researched myself back in the day. It was um, not news to me, but he put a figure on the number of people who um, are suing, uh, officially suing uh, Monsanto in the United States. 9,000 was, was mentioned. But he, in his case, has no, um, has no ambition to sue uh, the company he accepted as 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 fate and uh, his faith um, kind of doesn't really allow him to make a huge fuss over it before we left he gave me a blessing which you know um, is was kind of nice for me because I'm obviously well not obviously <laughs> I'm a current carrying atheist um but incidentally i've just written a i think a very good short story about heaven uh but anyway he blessed me and a lot of my friends actually saw me being blessed and later sort of um commented wryly uh on the subject and i i i just turned to them and sort of said that man has is dying from a cancer he received from uh, a Monsanto spray that was being used on potatoes. That kind of, you know, quietened things amongst my my friends. And I'm stymied as to what what to do. I I probably will not write again on the subject or at seventy, just going on seventy seven, get deeply involved, but. I do feel guilty that I didn't keep up the um, the propaganda as effectively as I did back in the day. It is one of the great crimes of modern times that this company is getting away with the mass murder it's uh, involved in. And you believe me, I, I know from personal experience, talking to these guys and dealing with these guys, that they are cynical. Or oh, they will have their families buy organic in one thing or another, but they will promote GM to the world and they promote glyphosate as being so safe. 
they did this. I asked her to drink it. Oh, I, don't, I don't really know what to say. I, I probably will finish um, there and maybe making a promise to myself that I, I really must get involved. And I hope I, hope I meet that couple again. And um, I suppose all I can do is offer them understanding and and succor. I would urge, um, I would urge you um, to get involved in this struggle against um, terrible corporations like Monsanto, who are very deliberately um, destroying this very beautiful um, world of ours. But we'd be particularly alert in supermarkets with regard to the, uh, the, the food you buy and where it comes from and the chemicals that are used in, in the growing thereof. I suppose I comfort myself by, by saying I've done my bit. But in, in the face of the, the horrors of uh, what's been done to our environment, and above all, the, the foods and, and, and drinks that we consume by very, very cynical um, operators, I, I should be, and I am, ashamed. Grow naturally. Grow smart, Ireland. Grow smart world.